السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله continue with the book حسن المسلم we've reached the chapter which we started last week pertaining to the duas which are used for the opening of the salat dua al-istiftahat today we're going to take another one of those duas which you use in the opening of your salah and it's collected by Imam Abi Dawood rahimahullah ta'ala narrated from our mother Aisha radiyallahu anha who said qalat she said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا استفتح الصلاة that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he would open the salah meaning start the prayer off قال he would say سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وتبارك اسمك وتعالى جدك ولا إله غيرك the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would say these words and let's look at the meanings إن شاء الله قوله سبحانك اللهم أي أنزهك يا الله عن الند Meaning, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I say subhanak, I am disassociating you from any partners, any equals, there's nobody like you. Wa tashbih wa nadir, fa anta munazzihun an kulli aib, salimun min kulli naqs. So you are disassociated, removed from any type of shortcoming, any type of uh, blemish, or any type of thing which we looked upon as being a negative. مُسْتَحَقٌ لِكُلِّ ثَنَا وَحَمْدٍ You are the one truly deserving of all types of praise and all types of glorification. So, Subhanak, as we've just described, it has these meanings and the reality is that the one, more than one studies about Islam and studies about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the correct way so that the knowledge can be nurtured the more the person's heart and soul will come to realize this, that Allah is the only one that is truly worthy of being praised in this perfect manner. He is u- uniquely amazing and majestic in a way that nobody else can be. So the more one reads about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more one reflects upon the religion, the more one purifies their heart and soul through worship in the correct way, then the more one will come to this realization and will, won't be able to control themselves except to be in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and except to be in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is from the greatest of objectives of why we study our religion and why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika wa bihamdika awaw lil atf so this waw wa bihamdika is waw lil atf وَالْمَعْنَى أَنَّ حَادَ تَسْبِيهِ أَلَّذِي أُسَبِّحُكَ بِهِ هُوَ مَحَدْ جُودٌ مِنْكَ And it means that this tasbih that I just gave you, سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّا And now I'm saying, وَبِحَمْدِكَ I'm recognizing that you need to be praised also. Why? Because it's only through your virtue and through your mercy and kindness that I was able to give that tasbih in the first place. وَتَوْفِيقٌ لِي بِفِعْلِهِ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are the only one that gave me the ability and reminded me and helped me to be in the presence of mind to praise you, to give you tasbih in the first place. That's why I also need to recognize that I need to thank you and praise you. Because when I thank you and praise you, I'm recognizing that it wasn't me that brought myself into the state, cognitive state of recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but rather it was from your mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your guidance and your gift to me. So as we know that when we have this hamd, when we have this praise in our states, in, in our, as, as a state of being that we are praising Allah for every good that we come across and every good that we do, then it saves us from being arrogant, it keeps us in a state of humility, it keeps us in a state of love and appreciation for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deep gratitude and also it brings about huge benefits. What is that benefit? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكَ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And when your Lord had proclaimed, has proclaimed that you, O mankind, when you give thanks, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you. So when we give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shukr is known as al-hafidh, al-jalib, is known as the thing that protects the bounty that we have and it brings more for us. So when we give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the true way, it protects what we already have from bounties and it brings us more bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more we thank Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to worship Him, allowing us to take the sweetness of faith, allowing us to enjoy the Islam that He's given us as a gift, then the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase for us these gifts that He has bestowed upon us. 
سبحانه وتعالى and then we say what tabarak asmuk what tabarak asmuk ay kathrat barakatuhu fi samawati wal ard meaning that oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your name and your names they are so so full of blessings in the heavens and the earth kathrat there are so many blessings in your names and attributes in the heavens and the earth fa bihi tajlubu al ni'am wa tarfa'u al naqm so due to your names and through your names we gain all kinds of goodness and through your names and worshiping you through your names and living by your names and attributes we avoid all types of harm and difficulty so the one who spends time learning about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala learning the names and attributes of allah and that occupies their soul okay then this person is truly going to have a blessed life because we just said wa tabarak asmuk and glorified and blessed and full of baraka is your name and names so the person that lives with these names through reading through studying through implementing through reflecting then this person's life is truly going to be blessed due to the dictates of the meanings of those names what ta'ala jadduk is the next thing we say jaddullah wa adhamatuhu so the jadd of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we say ta'ala jadduk high and mighty is your jadd it means high and mighty is your is adhamatullah is your is your state of being of being so magnificent and powerful and in control of everything in existence right ay ta'alat azamatuhu fawq fawq kulli azama that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's azama allah's greatness is above and greater than any type of greatness that we may imagine in this world so this word jadd yuqal jadda fulan fi an-nas ay azama fi uyunihim wa jalla fi sudurihim that when the word is used linguistically jad right it means that jad a person is magnified in the eyes of people the people look upon this person with awe okay and even in their hearts they have awe of this person when they're around this person they behave in a different manner so the true jad it belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay that allah azawajal allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azawajal he is supreme he is the one that has conquered and control not conquered because to conquer something you would have to have be absent from it in the first place but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in full control of everything that exists in the heavens and the earth there is none that can question him as to why he does such a thing there is none that can take from him anything of his kingdom and dominion except with his permission so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has true supreme might and majesty and as we said when it's used linguistically amongst the people it means that a particular person has jad that the people are in awe of that person and the people they raise him high in status and their hearts and chests are filled with awe of that person and that's how we want to be with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we want to be in true awe and amazement with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we think about allah and the gifts that he gives us and the way he's created the universe and how amazing his legislation is etc etc whenever we reflect upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he's revealed or created it should fill our hearts with awe it should fill our hearts with love it should fill our hearts with humility it should fill our hearts with reverence it should fill our hearts with magnification all of these meanings because if the heart is connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way in this manner is not going to chase after the creation as so many people do who are void of having these feelings in their heart whenever they hear about a certain person on earth they become so excited and so amazed and so much in awe of that person's news whereas us what matters to us is to know about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't care so much about the creation yes we respect everybody we give them their rights but we don't chase after the creation we chase after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hearts were created to recognize this and the ones who don't recognize this they will never find happiness tranquility or peace because allah says ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub is it not with the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we can translate it it is only with the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the hearts they will find tranquility and peace and that is the reality of our situation that if we want tranquility and peace we have to fill our hearts with the descriptions that i just gave pertaining to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa la ilaha ghayruk ay la ma'bud bi haqq illa ant meaning that there is none to be worshiped in truth except you o allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ما يستفاد من الحديث what else can we take as benefits from this hadith firstly ما كان عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من تمام تحقيق العبودية that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم it shows us how the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم 
was in a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of complete servitude. ala rabbihi bima yaliqu bihi. And the Prophet وسلم, would always uh, always enumerate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in praise and in descriptions of glorification. Secondly, tadamana had a dua and wa tawhid thalatha. That this dua, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik wa tabaruk asmuk wa ta'alu jaddak wa la ilaha ghayrak. This dua, it compromises the three aspects, the three categories of Tawheed, which are famously known. Tawheed al rububiyyah the Tawheed, the oneness of Allah's Lordship, that He alone is the Creator, the Sustainer, the Provider. Tawheed al uluhiyah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the alone that, we, alone that we give our worship to. We don't give our worship to any other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa Tawheed al asma wa sifat and that Allah alone has perfect names and attributes that we should learn and that we should worship Allah through them. طيب. And also we benefit ibtal man da'a ghayr Allah that whoever calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this is futile and it's worthless and it has no value in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sawa'an kana al-mad'u nabiyan mursalan aw malakan muqarraban whether that person is a messenger that was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it's a close angel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has or abdan salihan ala za'mihim or a righteous person that the people claim and think is righteous so all of these people whether it's prophets or angels or whether it's righteous people in the eyes of people if they are called upon besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this is futile and it won't help the people in in any way shape or form as we mentioned our hearts are chasing after Allah we don't chase after the creation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hajj ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الْحَقِّ That is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is the truth, the reality وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ هُوَ الْبَاطِلِ And those or whoever is called upon besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is falsehood وَأَنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْكَبِيرِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the raised the mighty, the highly raised and the mighty Shaykh al-Islam in Taymiyyah he had some words to say about <coughs> about this dua and other opening duas in general dua, duas that we use when we open our salah the starting of the salah he said may Allah have mercy upon him الاستفتاحات ثابتة كلها سائغة باتفاق المسلمين that all of the established opening duas from the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, they are permissible by the agreement of the scholars, of the Muslims. وَلَمْ يَكُنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُدَاوِمُ عَلَى الْإِسْتِفْتَاحِ وَاحِدْ قَطْعًا That the Prophet وسلم, never used to continue upon just one particular istiftah, one opening salah. Rather, well, he would change between them. وَالْأَفْضَلْ أَنْ يَأْتِي بِالْإِبَارَاتِ الْمُتَنَوِعَةِ As the Shaykh says, رحمه الله, Ibn Taymiyyah, that is better for a person for each salah that he changes from one to the other, that he comes with different types of opening du'as. عَلَى وَجُوهٍ مُتَنَوِعَةٍ كُلُّ نَوْءٍ مِنْهَا عَلَى حِدَّتِهِ وَلَا يُسْتَحَبُ الْجَمْ بَيْنَهَا That the person when worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should always choose for a different salah, a different opening du'a, right? And the person shouldn't join between them, shouldn't mix between the variety, the, the various different openings, uh, so, uh, prayers in the salah. One of the benefits of this and one of the virtues is that this keeps a person cognizant and thinking about what he's saying because if you say the same thing all of the time you, he or she will become accustomed to this and kind of become in a monotonous robotic frame of mind whereas when you change up the du'as and you think of you use the new du'as that you've learnt then not only does this keep you in connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it gives you energy because you're doing something new rather than doing the same old thing all the time but also it's reviving the sunnah, it's keeping the sunnah alive because if the people only memorize one dua then what about all the other duas that the Prophet sallallahu taught us then they're going to be lost, right? so we need to make it a habit that we look into these duas which have profound, deeply profound, beautiful meanings and we try to let's make a goal for ourselves that we learn one new dua every year so i've given you so much time 12 months learn one dua the opening duas every year so after 10 years you're going to have 10 of the uh, authentic duas that the prophet وسلم, taught us to use in the opening of the salawat in the opening of the prayer so there are many more duas in this section the duas pertaining to the opening of the prayer but we're going to leave those alone 
because the majority of us haven't memorized them. We've only memorized probably the ones that I've just gone through. So we're going to jump now to the next section, which is Dua al ruku speaking about the supplications made in the ruku. The first of them we take Subhana Rabbil Azim Thalatha Marat to say Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. And this comes in the hadith of Hudayfa ibn Yaman, Radiallahu Anhu, collected by Imam Abi Dawood. With his companion, he narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he, Hudayfa, used to pray. He prayed with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say in his ruku, in his bowing, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. And in his prostration on the floor, he would say, Subhana Rabbi al A'la. He would say, Subhana Rabbi al A'la. And then the companion he continues and he says, وَمَا مَرَّ بِآيَةِ رَحْمَةٍ إِلَّا وَقَفَ عِنْدَهَا فَسَأَلْ That whenever the Prophet ﷺ would come across a verse in the Qur'an when reciting, okay, a verse in the Qur'an in his salah which pertains to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the Prophet ﷺ would stop at that point, reflect and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy. وَلَا بِآيَةِ أَعْذَابٍ إِلَّا وَقَفَ عِنْدَهَا فتعوذ. And neither would the Prophet ﷺ when he would come across a verse pertaining to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would just pass by. No, the Prophet ﷺ would stop and reflect and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the protection of his anger and his punishment. هَذَا لَفْضُ Abi Dawood, And this is the narration found in the collection of Imam Abi Dawood. So we're talking about now what we say in the Ruku, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, And of course we're going to touch up upon what was mentioned in the hadith about what you say in the sujood, Subhana Rabbi al A'la. So the first thing we look at, Subhana Rabbi, as we just mentioned what Subhan means in the previous dua. أَيْ أُنَزِّهُ Rabbi wa أَجِلَّهُ an kulli أَيْبٍ أَوْ نَقْسٍ Meaning that I glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I declare that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far removed from any shortcomings and in any deficiencies and any blemishes of any sort. وَفِي قَوْلِهِ Rabbi, And the word Rabbi, my Lord, قَالَ ibn Athir, rahimallah, the, the scholar ibn Athir, he said, الرَّبْ يُطْلَقُ فِي اللُّغَةِ عَلَىٰ الْمَالِكِ That the word Rabb linguistically has the meaning as follows. Number one, al-malik, the owner, the owner and controller. وَسَيِّدُ الْمُدَبِّرُ and the Sayyid al mudabbir also the one who owns and the one who takes care of the affairs, puts everything into motion and, and, and um, organizes everything. Wal Murabbi. And Al Murabbi is the one that nurtures, that nurtures, okay, that gives the person or creation whatever they need to benefit in life. Wal Mun'im. And Mun'im, the one that bestows bounties upon the creation. So when we think of the word Rabb, it has these meanings that Allah is the Malik, He's the owner, the control, the controller of everything that exists, the Malik, and He is Al He is the Sayyid and Al Mudabbir. He is the one who takes care of everything in terms of organization, and He is Al Murabbi, the one that gives us and nurtures us with everything that we need to benefit in life. Wal Mun'im, and He is the one Subhanahu wa Taala that bestows upon us bounty and gift after gift that is why some people when they understand these meanings and they connect with these meanings when they say ya rabbi it invokes in them emotions of love and awe and attachment to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the rabb which contains all of the meanings that we just touched upon imam sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala the famous scholar may allah have mercy upon him he said the word al-azim azim subhana rabbi al-azim so the word Al-Azim, Kamil Al-Asma wa Sifat, the one who is complete and perfect in his names and attributes, Kathir Al-Ihsan wa Khayrat, the one who is who, who has so much good and Ihsan, so much good to his creation. Wahmadhu bi qalbika wa lisanika. So praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your heart and with your tongue. Wajawarihika and also with your limbs. لأنه أهل لذلك because he subhanahu wa ta'ala is deserving of that وهو المستحق لأنه لأن يشكر فلا يكفر and he is the one deserving that he should be thanked and not disbelieved in not disbelieved not only in disbelief of his existence but also disbelief in terms of not thanking him and appreciating what he has given to us that is also considered kufr kufr al-ni'm kufr al-ni'm that we, we don't recognize the blessings and bounties that Allah has given us. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one to be remembered and not forgotten and to be obeyed and not to be disobeyed so this is the understanding of the word Al-Azim Al-A'la Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim and then Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la what we say in Sujood Al-A'la Hiya Sifatu Li Rabb Al-Ali it is a description for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one that is high above وَهِيَ تَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ عَلُوهِ عَلَىٰ جَمِيعِ خَلْقِهِ And it alludes to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is high and above all of his creation. فَالْكُلْ خَادِئٌ لِأَمْرِهِ So everyone in creation is submissive, submissive to his command, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ قَاهِرٌ لَهُمْ And he is able to be, he is able to compel them and control them. لَا يَخْرُجْ أَحَدٌ أَنْ قَبْذَتِهِ Nobody can escape his grasp, subhanahu wa ta'ala. قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية ابن تيمية he says some amazing words وذلك أن سجود غاية الخضوء وذل من العبد and that is because when we say سبحان ربي الأعلى Allah we are glorifying him and recognizing that he is the most high it is because when we're in sujood it is the most complete expression of our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our humility humility and poverty before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a slave. And also our humility and expression of our humility when we are in sujood before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're doing this with the most honorable thing that we have for the sake of Allah. And it is the face of the servant, the face of the slave. So the most honorable thing that you have in your being is your face, right? We put that on the floor out of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of uh, recognizing that we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we are truly poor in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بِأَنْ يَضَعَهُ عَلَى تراب. So we put this on the ground. فَنَاسَبَ فِي غَايَةِ صُفُورِهِ أَنْ يَصِفَ رَبَّهُ بِأَنَّهُ الْأَعْلَى So it's appropriate that in this situation that we describe our Lord as being the highest because when we put our face with that connection and that understanding then we, of course we acknowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high and the word a'la is more far reaching in terms of meaning than the word al-ali so due to this act that we do <clears throat> we prostrate with our foreheads, with our face, which is the most honorable thing that we have out of humility and servitude and submissiveness and acknowledgement of Allah's greatness and that we are only his slaves and in complete need of him at all times. Then due to this connection and this action that we have now established as the slave to his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah azawajal gifts us an amazing gift. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ In Sahih Muslim, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ فَأَكْثِرُ الدُّعَى That the closest a person is to his Lord or her Lord is when they are in prostration. So increase in making dua. Because in this point, because you've established that connection, that relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah azawajal gifts you a gift which is that now your duas are going to be answered in this position. So the Prophet ﷺ said, فَأَكْثِرُ الدُّعَى And in another narration, he said, it's very likely that your dua is going to be accepted in this position. So it's a gift from Allah and a gift that we should use and not rush in our sujood. We should spend as much time as possible in the sujood, worshipping Allah and begging from Him. And also that we benefit some amazing words. And these words are really amazing. When you read them in Arabic, they really make you reflect and and give you all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time happiness and joy. So from this relationship of sujood, So the slave understands that he doesn't have from pride and greatness a portion. And also having a status of being high, of being high on the earth. لَيْسِ الْعَبْدِ فِيهِ حَقْ Then the slave, the slave, the servant doesn't own any of that. فَإِنَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ ذَمَّ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْعُلُوَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Because this belongs to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has blamed the ones who want to be high and above everybody on the earth. كَفِرْعَون Like Fir'aun. وَإِبْلِيسِ And like the shaytan. وَأَمَّا الْمُؤْمِنْ فَيَحْصُلُ لَهُ الْعَلُوَ بِالْإِيمَانِ As for the believer, 
then his highness and his raising in status it doesn't come from chasing the earth it doesn't come from chasing the dunya it comes from his iman his belief in Allah Azawajal and his or her actions in terms of worship and knowledge that is how they gain highness La bi iradatihi lahu kama qala ta'ala not through chasing the world world as Allah Azawajal says wa la tahinu wa la tahzanu wa antum la'lawn in kuntum mu'minin and don't despair and don't have sadness whilst you are believers and you will be above whilst you are above if you are believers so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the believers that never despair of the situation that you may be in never despair of the fact that you may be few in the earth or weak at some times okay because the reality is that you are always above in kuntum mu'minin if you are believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's through iman through submission to Allah through acts of devotion to Allah and through serving the religion of Islam is that is how a person finds themselves raised like the Prophet said in another narration Man Allah. whoever has humility for the sake of Allah and is humility in front of Allah humble in front of Allah then Allah will raise this person in status and honor so as we mentioned, because the person puts himself in that low position before Allah in the sujood, he praises Allah Azawajal and makes the speech of Allah, glorifying him and saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the highest. subhanahu wa ta'ala al-a'la. So he subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is the highest. Wal asfal, and the slave is the lowest in relationship between him and Allah. Kama annahu rabb. Like Allah Azawajal is the Lord wal Abdul Abd and the slave is only a slave. Wahul Ghaniu wal Abdul Faqid and Allah Azawajal is completely rich and the slave is poor in front of Allah Azawajal. Walaysa bain al Rabb wal Abd illa mahadul ubudiya and there is not between the slave and it, and his Lord except only the relationship of servitude. So all of us who are running after the creation, running after saints, running after prophets, running after celebrities. Stop doing that. Be connected only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَكُلَّمَا كَمَّ لَهَا قَرْبُ الْعَبْدُ إِلَيْهِ SubhanAllah. So every time the slave improves and perfects his relationship as a slave between to Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. لِأَنَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ رَبُّهُ لِأَنَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ بَرٌ Because he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving jawadun generous muhsin always doing good yu'til abd ma yunasibuhu gives the slave that which is required and that which is appropriate for him fakullama adhuma faqruhu ilayhi kana aghna so every time the slave is more in need of allah azza wa jal then this, then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases him in richness or it could mean also every time the slave shows poverty to allah azza wa jal then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases that person in richness. And every time the person uh, submits more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a poor, humble servant, then Allah azza wa jal increases the person in honor and might. So our honor and might is not through celebrating the World Cup. Our honor and might is not through chasing celebrities. Our honor and might is not through speaking a particular language or dressing in a particular way. Our honor and might is doing everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. That's where we get honor from and that's where we get might from. A few more things that we can benefit from the hadith. Number one, wajubu ta'adheem Allah fi halati ruku. The obligation of magnifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorifying him in the position of the ruku. Because the Prophet said in the hadith, amma ruku fa'adhimu fihi rabb. As for the ruku, then in it, make ta'zeem of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala magnify the praise of Allah azawajal and recognize how amazing and powerful and magnificent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wa dhakara thalath tasbihat al-qasd minhu tumanina fi'lan and three was mentioned and the intent from three saying three times subhanahu rabbi al-azim or three times subhanahu rabbi al-a'la is that the person has tranquility in the action that they are doing not like the one who just pecks on the ground up and down a quick 
prostration or a quick bowing in the ruku, but rather the person is not playing, uh, the heart is not absent-minded, and nor is the person playing with their clothing and their, their limbs, rather they are focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. تَعْذِيمُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّ يَكُونُ بِالْقَلْبُ وَالْلِسَانُ وَالْجَوَارِحِ the magnification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the one that is praying is with the heart, the tongue and the limbs, all of those connected. And that is by making the effort to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to get to know him through the knowledge that he has revealed and also through practically worshipping Allah by doing good as much as possible because that brings you closer to Allah and allows you to know Allah even more. And it also teaches us these narrations that um, how incorrect and how wrong and how false is the way of the people of pre-Islam, the pre-Islamic ignorance. In Hina lil ashqas ala sabil tahiyya, that they would bow down and prostrate to people as a way of welcoming them, as a way of greeting them. And subhanAllah, you find this a person that doesn't have Allah Azawajal in their heart in, in the correct way that this person is willing to bow down and willing to humble themselves in front of the creation instead of having might and honor and only humbling themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this causes the person to make either bowing or prostration to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sunnah when the person is making ruku is that his that his or her back is as straight as possible. And this is in each position. When the person is prostrating, elongating his back, and when the person comes up, and also when the person goes down to make sujood. The companion radiallahu anhu he said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا رقع سوى ذهره حتى لو صب عليه الماء استقر. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he would make ruku, he would make ruku in and his back being straight to such an extent. فكان إذا رقع سوى ذهره حتى لو صب عليه الماء استقر. That when he would make ruku, his back would be so straight that if water was to be spilt on his back, then the water would have remained where it was spilt it wouldn't have run off the back of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us benefit from these short words and to make us from those that learn du'as and understand du'as and implement du'as uh, in every aspect in our life and learn to live with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that pleases him oh allah make us from them ameen wa sallallahu alaihi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.